Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to walk you through transitioning from the GAPS introduction diet into the full GAPS diet. Well, now that you have made it through all six stages of the GAPS introduction diet, you have accomplished something huge. I hope that you realize what you have done for your health and how much this is gonna impact you in the long run. I know that for me, when I was kind of in the midst of the GAPS diet, like transitioning into the full one, you, you've been through a lot, you know you have a ways yet to go, and just know that years down the road, I look back to where I was while I was in the middle of the GAPS diet, and I am so thankful for what I accomplished when I went through that. So if you're in the midst of it and you're like, oh, this is hard, I just wanna encourage you that when you look back one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on years later, the more time goes on, the more thankful you're gonna be that you stuck with it and that you did the GAPS diet and you healed your gut, got your health back so that you could get your life back. So at this point, after going through those six stages of the introduction diet, you know a lot about cooking for the GAPS diet now. Chances are if you were somebody who liked to follow recipes just to the T and be super precise about following recipes and things like that, maybe you've learned to have a little bit of freedom now, experimenting and kind of coming up with your own dishes. If you're already somebody who loved experimenting, then you got to do that even more and got to enjoy it that way. But most importantly, you know your body really well now. You know what you're doing well with, what kind of foods are working well for you, what kind of foods you have to be careful with or you're not ready yet. You know so much about that and that is such valuable information. So make sure that you realize and appreciate all of that new knowledge that you have gained in going through those GAPS introduction steps. So typically people follow the GAPS diet for a full two years. If you really didn't have many health issues and you just wanted to go through the GAPS diet to kind of reset things and make sure that your gut was in the best health that it could be, you might be fine going through it in one year or maybe even six months. But if you have something like leaky gut or food sensitivities or allergies, or eczema, you're probably gonna need to be on it for two years. Sometimes people, depending on if they're dealing with really serious chronic illness, they might have to be on it longer than two years, but two years is typical and it's best to plan on that at this point. And this has to be two years with no cheating. It's not like once you're done with the GAPS diet and you can eat a full nourishing traditions or Weston A. Price style diet that includes all food groups as long as they're properly sourced and properly prepared and then you can kind of do that 80% of the time or 90% of the time and then if you want to once in a while you can have something else that's not really part of that diet. The GAPS diet does not work that way. You have to be 100% strict the whole time that you're on it in order for that good healing to actually take place. So it's really important to realize that and believe me even though it sounds kind of hard it is so worth it. I just I know I probably sound like a broken record but I cannot emphasize enough how worth it is to just do it right. So now that you're on the full GAPS diet, you're going to transition into having a lot more food than you were able to have on those different introduction stages. Through those intro stages, you built up gradually different types of food to make sure that your gut was ready for different things like raw vegetables and fruit and healthy sweeteners like honey. So after those restrictions of those intro stages, you're gonna feel like, wow, I have so much freedom now with all the foods and recipes that are available to me on the full GAPS diet. Let's kind of walk through what a typical menu is gonna look like for somebody on the full GAPS diet. And keep in mind that you customize this depending on the seasons and what your body is wanting within those allowed foods and what your body's doing well with and just customize it. But this is kind of a general guideline in case you're wondering what a day would look like. So it's good to start the day with a glass of water. You want it to be a good quality filtered water. We use a Berkey water filter to filter all of our drinking water and I have a link below to the one that we use if you're interested in that. You want it to be room temperature. You don't want cold water first thing in the morning. And then you can add a squeeze of fresh lemon juice or a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to that. That's just a really nice way to get your body set for the day. 
And then remember when we talked about adding those fresh juices on the introduction diet, when your stomach is empty is the ideal time to have those fresh juices. So first thing in the morning is perfect. And that's oftentimes the best thing to have next is your homemade freshly pressed juices. My favorite combination when I was going through the GAPS diet and then after the GAPS diet, I still like to do this, is carrot and apple juice with a little bit of beet. And what I would oftentimes do is make kind of like a breakfast smoothie, so it ended up being kind of like uh, my juicing for the day and then also a light breakfast to get me started. So what I would do is I would make the juice and then I would mix in some raw egg yolks from organic pasture-raised chickens and then I would add some of my homemade raw milk sour cream for some extra fat and probiotics and then I would blend all that up with an immersion blender and then drink it. It's really tasty with all the nice juice and the creaminess from the sour cream. You can't even tell the egg yolks are in there. So it tastes good and it's just such a great superfood to start your body off for the day. And then once that's kind of digested and you're ready for something heavier, a really good breakfast is eggs cooked whichever way that you like. Make sure that you're cooking them in lots of healthy fat, whether that's tallow or lard or ghee or at this stage you can also start transitioning to regular butter if your body does okay with that. And then remember like we talked about in the GAPS intro stages, you can add cooked vegetables along with those eggs. That's really delicious. Lots of onions maybe some peppers, zucchini, things like that. And then some sliced avocado alongside eggs is always delicious and helps bump up those healthy fats that you're eating. Other options for breakfast are soup. Soup is not just for lunch and dinner, but if you've been through the introduction diet, you know this already, but soup is also a wonderful thing for breakfast sometimes. You can make those GAPS squash pancakes. You can have your herbal tea. You can make GAPS legal baked goods like muffins and breads for breakfast. And then you want to make sure always to include with every meal some probiotic food. So if you're having the eggs and vegetables, you can add some sauerkraut along the side. You can add sour cream to a bowl of soup. Just fit those different probiotic foods in different ways. For lunch, you can do soup. You can do a stew recipe like we talked about where you have meat and vegetables in the oven in a dish. You can have more avocado, you can have raw or cooked vegetables, and make sure that with every meal that you're not having soup that you also have some meat stock alongside what other foods you're also eating. And then always adding in that probiotic food too, whether it's fermented vegetables like sauerkraut or sour cream or yogurt. Dinner can be the same thing as lunch or even breakfast, just choosing from all of those different allowed foods and creating delicious meals. There are so many different options. For snacks, you can have things like fruit, nuts, and GAPS legal baked goods, as well as yogurt. I have a lot of GAPS recipes that I've come up with. There are lots of other GAPS recipes available in books and online. The GAPS diet book itself has lots of recipes in it. So there's no reason to get bored or feel like you're deprived. There's just so many different things that you can enjoy. And I'm gonna be sharing lots and lots more GAPS recipes on my channel here, both for the introduction diet and for the full GAPS diet. So stay tuned and be watching for those. As you go through the full GAPS diet, you're gonna see lots and lots of foods that you did not eat. For all of the different foods that are on the full GAPS diet that you did not eat on the introduction diet, just make sure that you add them one at a time. Go slowly and watch your body to make sure that you're doing okay with it. If you're not ready for any foods, then just leave them for a few weeks and then try again and see if down the road you can have it again. Some foods have to wait longer than others, but just go through them slowly and just Start adding things in until you're eating as many of the things on the full GAPS diet that you, as you can. If you guys have requests and ideas for different recipes that you'd like me to do for GAPS diet recipes, make sure you leave a comment for me below. If you have any questions about anything, leave me a comment. I try to respond to all the comments that I get. There will be a link below to my blog post where I have this full written article if you're the type of person who likes to read all this information and know what to do when you're transitioning to the full GAPS diet. Down below there's also a link to where you can grab your own copy of the GAPS diet book if you don't have one already. And then I have a new GAPS diet printable. It's a really handy thing that you can, hand, that you can hang on your refrigerator. It's a graphic that goes 
over all the different GAPS diet introduction steps. So if you're still working through those and you want something that's just really easy to glance at when you want to know what food do I add next, then this is going to be really helpful for you. So there's a link below where you can grab that free printable. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think might find it helpful or interesting. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week on traditional health wisdom and living a sustainable DIY lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.